Welcome to the event entry component overview training session. In this training session, I will explain all the event entry components and what their purpose is. So looking at this uh, diagram here, if we look at the bottom middle, we'll see the SQL component here. So this is the database where event entry stores all the data that it's collecting. We currently support two different types of database types, Postgres and Microsoft SQL Server. Postgres is actually the database that uh, Event Sentry ships with. So if you don't currently have a database server that you can utilize in your environment, then you can just stick with the built-in database, which is based on Postgres. If you already have a database on your network, of course, uh, maybe like a, da a big database cluster somewhere that uh, already you know houses other vendors' databases, then you can simply uh, point Event Sentry to that database server and create the Event Sentry database there. The event entry web reports that can actually be installed on Windows, Mac, and Linux give you a visual interface to all the data that's stored in the database. So with the web reports, you can look at dashboards, run the queries on all the different features and data that's been gathered, uh, create reports, run jobs, and so forth. With the web reports and the database, you technically have full access to all of the data that event entry has stored. Now, right above it is the collector component. So the collector component is optional, but generally speaking, always utilized. The collector sits essentially between all the other components and the database and sort of serves as a, a proxy so that the other components don't have to access the database directly. Now, the network services heartbeat and AD monitor uh, components will usually talk to the database directly if they're on the same LAN. So there's um, usually more efficient, uh, but especially when it comes to the Windows agents, uh, it's preferable to have those talk to the collector instead of directly to the database. They can talk directly to the database. And in some cases that's preferred, especially smaller installations, for example, but generally speaking, uh, Windows hosts you'll want to have to talk to the collector. There are obviously some security benefits with this as well. The database only has to allow uh, connections from the collector or from the local network. And uh, the other advantage is that the collector does other things in addition to just being a plain old data proxy. It also manages configuration agent updates, meaning that when you are monitoring your Windows servers and workstations, the collector can actually make sure that all the remote agents are on the latest version of the agents so when there's patches you know they'll upgrade them automatically without any intervention needed from your end and it will also update the latest configurations so it's a very seamless process and keeps everything up to date and running the collector is also useful when you have a mobile workforce for example laptops um, that are just you know where people work from home or from coffee shops uh, all communication between the agents and the collector is encrypted and compressed. So it really doesn't matter in which part of the world they are, whether they're at home in a coffee shop or traveling on an airport, the agents will in the background silently connect to the collector. It's a single TCP port that you need to open up and always transmit data whenever there's a connection. Next, um, we'll move up to the network services. So the network services and the heartbeat monitor sort of serve as the network monitoring part of event entry network services are fairly passive service so they will mostly receive data from other devices on the network so for example syslog snp traps and netflow so if you have linux machines that are sending syslog data to event entry it will go through the network services which will then either directly write to the database or related data through the collector Again, if the network services are running on the same network as the database, it's usually more efficient to just have them write directly. But if you have a distributed setup, uh, think MSP, for example, where you have a number of customer installations behind a firewall, well, then you can configure the network services to actually send the data through the collector over the internet. So again, so syslog, Linux machines are sending syslog data, your firewall or switches are sending SMP traps. Uh, maybe you're utilizing NetFlow, um, you know, your firewall sending NetFlow data. So that all goes through the network services. The network services does not actually go out and pull anything. It really just receives data. 
Another feature inside the network services is the ARP daemon. And the ARP daemon essentially monitors all network traffic looking for new MAC addresses. So if you want to detect, if somebody adds a new device to the network, plugs it into the you know, Ethernet port, whether that's a new laptop or a switch or somebody trying to hide you know, some device, as soon as that device makes any outbound communication, any broadcast, the network services ARP daemon will catch that and make that information visible in the web reports or you can get an email alert in real time now the heartbeat monitor just like the network services work with your network devices so anything that's not windows but unlike the network services that just receive data it actually goes out and pulls data uh, from those devices so the most basic thing of course is icmp a basic ping you know are those devices even up and running obviously not enough in most cases to ensure that th something is working you can also check TCP ports to see if they're up and running. And it can also run SNMP GET requests. So they can uh, get uh, information like performance information, disk space information, running processes, and things like that. So that's sort of the part in Event Century uh, that makes it work well and supplies some of the information that we uh, usually get from Windows machines. And then if you move to the left here to a D monitor, uh, that's an optional component that interfaces with Active Directory. So what a D monitor does is basically two things. Number one, I'll give you an inventory of all act relevant Active Directory objects, such as users, groups, and computer accounts, and of course, group memberships as well. So you don't have to go through the MMC app you know, on your domain controller to find out does a user exist um, and in which group is it in. So AD monitor provides you with all of that and more. You will see things like when was the uh, password last changed and, and so forth. But this is, uh, of course, not a sales video, so we're going to stick to the technical part of it. So AD monitor gives you an inventory of these objects, but it will also record changes. So any sort of change that happens that's made to an object in Active Directory, whether that's a username being changed, a user added, deleted, group membership changes, and so forth, organizational unit being created, renamed, deleted, all of those changes will be available in uh, the AD monitor uh, reports. And then finally, you know, to the right, we have our Windows agents. So the Windows agents essentially are the event century uh, agents monitoring Windows-based machines, your domain controllers, your servers, your workstations, and your laptops. In most cases, uh, they'll, like I explained earlier, they'll be talking to the collector, uh, if you have smaller setups where you don't want to, you know, manage uh, the collector components, you can configure them the right directly to the database. But again, in most cases, uh, the Windows agents will talk to the collector. So that sort of concludes this overview. Again, we have Postgres or Microsoft SQL Server databases, which is queried by the web reports. So web reports visualize all that data. There's a central optional collector component, mostly usually used by the Windows agents, the event century agents, and then the three other components. A D monitor obviously works with Active Directory, Heartbeat Monitor goes out and queries machine network devices, and network services mostly receive data from your network devices. Thank you.